Hello, my name is James Traley from James Films, and I wanted to show you the walkthrough for this image that you see here today. This isn't really a tutorial, but it will show you a lot of tips and tricks that I use on a daily basis to create a lot of my renders. So have a look through this and hope you learn something by the end. So almost every render I start with, I try to use the default cube in Blender if possible, and I use it to just block out the scene using rough shapes. I use a lot of boxes, cubes, and a lot of uh, cylinders and, and different things to block out the scene. I like to set my camera up early too to get an idea for the perspective that will be the final scene. And if you notice, I don't do any work on the back around the camera. I really only do work in the foreground here because that's all you're gonna see in a 2D image on Instagram. I use a lot of booleans to cut holes out of my geometry and add in windows and doors and nice archways. And this I will actually have to go back and revisit later on in the render to remesh what you're seeing here because it'll actually kind of mess up the geometry a bit when you're going to UV unwrap this. So I will revisit that in a bit later. But this is just, again, simple shapes here just to block out the scene. And you can already see on the right there, the camera view, you have a nice uh, view of what will become the final scene. You have a window, this door, and there will be a lot more details added in. You can see I'm appending in these shades here too, and I use a lot of assets that I've already developed before for other things, and there's no shame in doing that. It really speeds up your workflow a lot if you can. I use displacement modifiers here and add in a bit of noise and a bit of distortion to the landscape. If you look outside your window right now, you'll notice that no surface is perfectly flat. There's a lot of imperfections, a lot of divots and, and bumps. I add in a lot of that and experiment a bit with that. I also add in a second plane, which will be the lake a bit later on as well here, bring in the HDRI for the background. I focus a bit more on the grass of the scene. I use something from the Blender Market called Scatter, which is fantastic, and it comes preloaded with a whole bunch of nature assets like grass and weeds and little flowers that you can add across your screen. And I use white painting to select where I want that to be in my image and where I don't want it to be. So for example, I don't want grass growing in the water. So I will actually uh, basically erase that out from the particle system and then I kind of experiment to get that along the banks of this lake here for my scene. You can see it's almost crashing my viewport here a bit because uh, it is a pretty high resolution uh, amount of particles. But it actually has this really great proxy system where it uses uh, just simple boxes to kind of fill in uh, when you're working in render view, you can kind of quickly toggle them on and off so that you're not bogging down your viewport when you're rendering. So I often turn off the grass and work on texturing without those particle systems. So again, here I'm importing some Quixel assets here for the ceiling, UV unwrapping, remeshing a bit to get those to unwrap a bit cleaner. I had to revisit this archway to actually uh, fix it up again because I noticed there are a couple issues with it. I'd accidentally deleted a part of it when I was working on remeshing, so I quickly uh, fill that in again. And it's really easy to build these nice textures from Quixel into your uh, scene here. So you can see I'm working on the back walls here. I adjust the UVs a bit, adjust the hue saturation a bit to have it blend a bit better into my scene and then apply that to the other wall as well, UV and wrap, and it looks fantastic already. So now I like to spend a lot more time adjusting some other features here. So you'll see I'm working a bit more on that water, which is a texture I developed for another thing. I also get rid of this fan here too eventually, and that's the beauty of 3D. You can really quickly move around in your scene, adjust objects, delete things, move your camera around, adjust the lighting. So I encourage you to experiment as much as possible with your scene and really work to develop. Uh, a really great product. There's a lot of stuff I've developed that just sits on my hard drive for a while and it was still useful because I'll end up using it for another project later that I didn't anticipate. You can see me bringing in some other nature assets from something called Botanic uh, with a Q on the end and that is from the Blender Market as well. It's got some really great tropical assets like palm trees and other uh, beautiful nature assets. So I bring those in to add a bit of depth to the scene and as if you're kind of in this rainforest or really tropical place. I'm 
bringing in a couple more here, adding them close to the camera, some further away, and you have a really nice perspective on the image, and I think it adds a lot of intrigue, a lot of depth to the final product. And again, lots of experimentation here. There's some plants and trees that I add in, like this bamboo, that I end up actually deleting again later on, but it was still useful for me to kind of understand the composition of my scene and work through and experiment. So I also will bring in a VDB cloud here, which is actually developed by Christian. I'm tagging his Instagram in the description here, No Creative Abode. He does some fantastic work with Houdini, making these really nice volumes. And with Blender 2.83, you can actually bring in these volumes into your scene and add in material. And it's already adding this really nice principled volume, uh, which looks phenomenal when you're rendering this cloud. And what I found with these clouds and really hefty VDB volumetrics in Blender is you really have to light them properly. So you'll see I'll really blast this sunlight and I actually add a second fill light in here to just lighten up that left side just a bit more because I was noticing it was a bit dark. If you don't, you'll get a lot of noise, a lot of grain because volumetrics are very hard for render engines to render properly. They are very intensive on your computer and they will definitely bog down your render settings. So I actually reduce the size of it a bit and add in another huge cube here, you'll notice, which I'll actually remove the surface texture and just add in a principled volume to it. And that kind of adds a bit of this atmosphere, a little bit of this volumetric haze and glow to the scene. So it's really nice uh, and looks phenomenal. So I'll actually render this out, it takes a while. So I zoomed right to the compositing section here where I add a bit of glare. And you'll see now I'm on something called Unsplash, browsing for images for the background of my frame. A lot of times I will actually create the background in Blender itself. I'll make these mountains or dunes or whatnot in Blender. But for this one, I just wanted to use a real image for the background and focus a bit more on the foreground of my image. So lots of experimentation, I actually ended up choosing an image of a lake for this background here. And lots of trial and error here, again, experimenting around in Photoshop with different blend modes, different color adjustments. There's this great feature in Photoshop adjustments called match color, where you can select a layer to uh, kind of have the colors copied over onto a different layer to try to get them to blend a bit better. So oftentimes I'll do that to get my image colors to match up a bit better. Lots of work with brushes here. You can see this one image I was really trying to make work. I actually end up trashing this one and using a different one later on. But just lots of adjustment layers. You can see I'm, I'm always adding in new ones, adjusting sliders, kind of swiping them back and forth very quickly to get an idea for what that would look like. I add in this, uh, using a brush, I add in this uh, kind of volumetric glow to the side there. It's almost like these light rays, god rays coming in from that window. And I blend that in using a linear add mode, which is kind of this nice glow to the image. And this background that just added in will be actually the final background that I ended up using for the image. And a lot of work went into trying to blend this as well. I tried different brushing, I tried different blending skills uh, to try to get that to work. Uh, actually add some adjustments to the overall image and it will finally actually end up working later on. But again, lots of experimentation. I encourage you to really play around. There's no one way to do things. So if you find a way that works better for you to blend these in, by all means, go for it. There are a billion tutorials on Photoshop on YouTube. So if you run into any issues here, you can always look for those for help as well. Photoshop's a lot of fun and it really can add that extra dimension to your image to really take it to the next step. So in a second, you'll see I'm using something called the Nick Collection here, which is something that was developed by Google a number of years ago, I believe. It's since been discontinued, not developed anymore, but you can still find it and add it as a plugin to Photoshop. And I use that to add this kind of filmic glow, filmic haze to my look, to make it look like it was almost taken with a film camera. And it adds a bit of grain, a bit of uh, coloring to the image that I really, really enjoy. And I think it takes it that extra step to really make it into a nice product. I also sometimes go over to the Adobe Camera Raw to just adjust a lot of the settings like highlights, shadows, make sure I'm not clipping anything. Uh, add a bit of uh, coloring adjustments to as well. Sometimes I'll add a bit of split toning to take it to that extra step. And then I'll add in a couple more details here before the final image that you see here. This was a lot of fun, a really great process, and I really enjoyed going through to develop this. This was one of the first times I actually screen recorded. Uh, my blender process so i hope you enjoyed this if you have any tips or uh, feedback for me please feel free to leave a comment below and i will love to see what you have to say thanks for tuning in and i'll see you in the next one